All right, welcome to this tutorial where we set up the workspace for modding in Minecraft 181 with Forge. But before we get started, why don't you check out my Minecraft Modding 118 course with Forge over on Udemy or Skillshare. The course contains 11 hours of modding tutorials from the very beginning all the way to the advanced stuff like block entities and even world generation. Some additional and exclusive topics will also be added over the coming weeks and months. Look at the first two links in the description. You can either get the Udemy course for over 50% off or on Skillshare you can get one month free trial and access to mine as well as thousands of other classes. Right, now that this is done, let's start the tutorial. So first thing you are going to need is you're going to need a JDK. That stands for a Java Development Kit. I've linked Adoptium in the description below. It is this site and I can just highly recommend it. It's free and basically it should detect your operating system right here. Make sure that you are on Tamarin 17 and then just click latest release and it should download the MSI here or whatever you need for your operating system. Simply install this like any other program. But it's kind of important here when you are in the custom setup, I highly recommend making sure that you enable the Java home variable right here because if that is set, that's just going to make our lives a little bit easier down the line. Right after that is installed, we're also going to need an IDE that is an integrated development environment. I personally choose IntelliJ IDEA. I highly recommend you do the same because then you're going to be able to follow me way better than if you, for example, were to use Eclipse or something like VS Code. It's just a recommendation though. If you do download it, I once again have a link in the description below. Make sure to choose the community version right here on the right because it is free built on open source, exactly what we need. It has all of the features that we're ever going to need. So download that as well and also install that. The next thing is not something to download, but actually something to basically study and learn. And that is going to be Java knowledge. Java is not optional when you want to learn Minecraft modding. I highly recommend taking a look at, for example, my Java introduction for Minecraft and Hightail modding, which is going to introduce you to some of the basics in Java. I highly recommend checking it out because it can only help you if you really want to make a serious mod. You have to know Java, otherwise you cannot do it. After we've installed IntelliJ, we're going to go to the next link and that is going to be filesminecraftforge.net. And this is going to basically contain all of the Forge stuff. So you can see we're currently on version 1181 39.09. So this will probably be different to you in the future as you know new versions come out. And what you might also have is you might have two boxes here. So you might have a latest box or a debug box on the left and you know then a recommended build on the right. Usually you want to choose the recommended build and you will always want to choose the MDK. So just click on this and then we're just going to have to wait for five seconds until we can download it. So then in the top right corner, you can click the skip button and then just download the zip file. Now I've already prepared a folder right here. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to extract it to, you know, the crazy name. And I'm also going to rename this immediately. So I'm just going to rename this to forge tutorial dash one eighteen one. And then we no longer need the zip file and we can go into the folder right here and we can Delete four files, all of the text files basically change lock, credits, license, and readme, because those are specific to Forge, are going to be different for my mod in particular, but also your mod. Now, after we've done this, we can start IntelliJ IDEA for the first time. Now, it's probably going to look a little bit different to you than it does right here. However, you will have three buttons, and those are going to be the new project button, the open button, as well as the get from VCS button. And we want to choose the open button and basically navigate to the folder. Now, I will actually go into my folder here, just copy this with control C, paste it into control V, and then I can choose this folder. So it's very important that we choose the one where all of the files are included, not the source folder, but actually this folder right here. And if we've selected this, we can say, okay, then we say trust project, and then a new window will open right here, as you can see, and then stuff will happen in the background. Now, you might be getting errors, you might be getting some red text here. Don't worry about it. We're gonna fix all of those step by step, let this run through for a time and just be patient a little bit, sometimes take a little bit longer. We're going to probably get an error in just a moment, but no worries at all. Same with this warning right here. This warning is totally normal. This is because of our mappings. I'll basically be explaining that in a little bit as well. All right, so you can see I got a build successful after 1 minute 44 seconds. This might take, you know, a little bit longer for you depending on your internet speed and also how good your PC is. But whatever the case may be, even if you got a build failed, no worries at all. We're basically going to go through the steps that you will need to take every time. So watch carefully and go through all of the steps right here. You're going to go to File, Project Structure, making sure that the Project SDK right here is set to 17. So this is, should be the JDK that we've just downloaded. 
Same with the project level language, that should also be 17. Hit apply and OK. Then we're going to go to file again, settings, build execution deployment, build tools, Gradle, and we'll make sure that the Gradle JVM right here is set to project SDK 17. Also very important. Both of those should be checked, even if you're like, no, no it's going to be fine. Check this still. Check this two times. I don't mind. So make sure that those are both set correctly and then we should be fine. After that, you should, if the build failed, you should have a little elephant in the top right corner. If you don't have that yet, that's going to be fine. We'll still be able to fix this even if you had a fail here. Don't worry about it. We're first of all going to go through a few other steps. We can see in the source folder, main Java folder, we basically can expand this and then you can see that it sort of expands all the way. Now, this might be different to you. If you use IntelliJ for the first time, this will probably look a little bit more like this. And to basically fix this or to have it exactly like I do, go to this little gear here and then basically make sure that both flattened packages as well as compact middle packages is turned off. And then it's going to look exactly the same for you as it does for me. All right, the next file in which we want to go is the build.gradle file. So we'll double click on this and then we have some things to change. And the first thing is right here in the version, the group and the archive and base name. The mod version for me is going to be 0 0.01 and then 118. One, not 181, but 1181. I usually want to include the Java version of this of the mod basically that this bot is built on, then it just makes it a little bit easier for the user. When it comes to the group, you can see com your name. So this should be just replaced with your name and then the mod ID. I'm gonna be talking about the mod ID in just a moment, but for me this would be net dot tutorial mod. And then for the archive base name, this should also be the mod ID. This is tutorial mod. We're going to have to be defining the mod ID in a few more places in just a moment. Now, what's very important about the mod ID, and I will actually probably explain this twice here because it is incredibly important. The mod ID is a unique identifier for your mod. It can only contain lowercase characters, underscore dash and numbers, nothing else. It can't contain any spaces. It can contain like hashtags or plus or nothing like that. And most especially, it cannot contain uppercase characters. Really, it's incredibly important. Make sure to check this, make sure to follow those rules. Next thing, we can go down a little bit and just for the sake of argument, because we have it, we can basically select this example mod, press Control R, then a replacement menu will appear and then we can put in tutorial mod and just replace all of them. This is not strictly necessary. However, I personally do like to do this. We're actually done with changing the build.gradle file. You can basically load the Gradle changes again by clicking the little elephant. If that doesn't appear for whatever reason, you can go to the Gradle tab right here and click the reload all Gradle projects button. Right, upon reload, you might be getting some red text once again, some stuff that is, you know, not reading in properly or whatever. Don't worry about this. You should get those errors once in the very beginning and then they should no longer appear. So once again, just be patient. Let this run through. Another build successful, so no worries at all. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to open the terminal. I'm going to put in if the following thing dot slash Gradle W. Gen IntelliJ runs and hit enter. Now this is just going to, you know, generate some stuff for us that we're basically going to need, you know, download a few assets. Once again, this should not take longer than a minute or so. It, I've seen it take a little bit longer, but usually not too long. Once again, just be patient and just let this run through. There you go, a build successful in 43 seconds. That's exactly what you would want. And then the next thing is going to be, well, changing a few things in the classes and the resources. So let's first of all open the example mod class right here. I will be referring to this as your main class or your main mod class. And what we're going to do is first of all, we're going to change the package to exactly the package that we want. So for me, this would be net Joe tutorial mod. Now for you, this would be hopefully net or calm your name and then tutorial mod. That's going to be fine. It has a red underline. I'm just going to hover over this and move to package. Well, the package that I want to choose, I'm going to say yes. And then you can see it has now changed package to be under net Kaupenjo tutorial mod example mod. Now I can delete the no longer use packages. And what I will also do is I will rename this. Now what's very important is that we have to rename this by clicking on it, pressing shift F6. Or what you can also do is you can right click the file name. You can right click the file, right click, refactor, rename. And this is going to be the tutorial mod. And then you can see that it both changes 
the class name as well as the name of the file. That's very important. Otherwise, there might be a mismatch and that can lead to errors down the road. So then you can see the string right here inside of this add mod. What we want to do is we want to select this, including the quotation marks, right click, refactor, introduce constant, and this constant is going to be called mod underscore ID all in caps. And I'm actually going to take this and put it at the top of the class. And we're going to change the example mod because this is our mod ID to tutorial mod. Once again, all one word has to be written in lowercase. Very important for the mod ID. Apart from that, what we're going to do is we're going to actually just get rid of a whole bunch of stuff in here. So everything on the, from the bottom, including, you know, all of the stuff except for the setup method. And I'm also just going to personally make the formatting a little bit different. You can see that we're getting two errors here. We can just delete this and basically keep it like this for the time being. And then it's very important because we need to change one more thing, and that is in the resources metainf mods.toml file. So let's go into this, let's open this, and you can see mod ID example mod. This has to be tutorial mod or whatever mod ID you choose. This here has to match exactly this right here. So that's very important that those match. I can also change the display name to, for example, tutorial mod, tutorial mod, there you go. And the license is actually going to be MIT. And then, for example, for authors, I'm just going to say Kaumjo. Now, for you, this should hopefully say your name because you are the author of your mod. But for the time being, I'm going to have Kaumjo in here. We can also change the example mod right here to tutorial mod. This is not strictly necessary. However, the general idea is that when we have some dependencies right here, what is going to happen is that if you try to launch your mod without these dependencies, it's going to say, hey, this requires XYZ dependency. Otherwise, this does not function. So you can put this in or you can keep it like it is. Either way would be fine. I usually recommend doing it. But as you can see, it is optional. If you don't want this, you can also just delete all of the dependencies and just get rid of them. All right. That is, however, everything that we need to do to change this and we'll basically go through this. So now we'll go to the Gradle tab once again in the top right here, go to tasks, forge Gradle runs, and then double click the run client task right here. We can then minimize this and let's just let this run through. Now Minecraft should open after a little bit. Now it shouldn't take too long. And there we have it. Minecraft is already starting and it is going to hopefully start perfectly just like we want it to. So let's see. And there it is. Amazing. Let's immediately get the volume down and get the music off. There you go. And everything working. If I now go into the mods tab, you can see tutorial mod, tutorial mod. We have the author, Kaumjo, license MIT. So everything in here. You can, of course, all change this. This is all done by the mods.toml file. So that's basically where you would change all. But there you go. Basically, the journey has begun. You have now started to mod Minecraft with Forge for 1.18.1. Congratulations, first of all. And it's going to be a crazy and awesome journey. Let's see what we can come up with. So one thing about the warning right here, the project is configured with the official obfuscation mappings. What does that mean? Well, the general idea is the following. We have certain names for certain methods, and those are handled by the mappings. So just as a general overview, there were MCP mappings. Those do not exist anymore. And now they're only going to be the official mappings and parchment. Now, in the next tutorial, we're actually going to implement the parchment mappings into our project because they have mapped parameter names and Mojang mappings, Moj mappings, or the official mappings do not have that. So that's why we're going to basically change the mappings in the next tutorial as well. But for the time being, you shouldn't worry about this. The warning is completely normal, so there's nothing to worry about at all. So that's that would pretty much be that. Now, in the next step, I highly suggest taking a look at this as well. This is optional, but highly recommended, and that is going to be setting up the GitHub repository for the this project right here. And what we're going to do is... First of all, you're going to need a GitHub account. Now, I already have a GitHub account and I highly recommend just making one because it is a very reputable site. I've linked it in the description below. So just can highly recommend. And once you have that and lo are logged in, what you can do is in IntelliJ, you're just going to go to VCS, share project on GitHub. All right, so now you can see Forge Tutorial 1181. That's fine. I'm personally going to choose to make this private for the time being. But of course, you can always make this public. So if you want to share this, for example, with people and be like, hey, I have an issue here. What could this be? So basically, then you would need to, of course, make this public. Now, what I want to do is I want to go to add account and log in via GitHub. And this is going to open the JetBrains 
site right here and I'm just going to say authorize in GitHub. And because I'm logged in in GitHub, it's going to basically authorize me. And now I can see, there you go, share by github.com slash Kaupenjo. And I can just say share. And then it's going to immediately create all of this. So you can see a few things turn red. That's totally normal. Those are files that have newly been created. I'm going to say initial commit. That's fine. We're going to say add. And then all of this should be pushed to GitHub. And you can see if I now click on this link right here, it should open in on GitHub. There you go. And everything is already set up for us. So that's actually how easy it can be. It's very, very easy and straightforward. And what you will also have is access to this GitHub repository. So basically all of the code that we're going to write are going to be available in different branches here, as well as in gists as well. So in individual gists. So you can basically always compare what has been added or, you know, what has changed in certain classes and certain files. And then the last thing I also want to show you is just when we change stuff. So for example, maybe we want to add, you know, add add a comment, right? So maybe we've changed something. You can see that the file where things have changed, it's going to turn blue. And then what we need to do is we need to go to this commit right here. So the commit tab and check all of the changes that we want to basically add. We're going to say added a comment and we're going to say commit. And now sometimes what it says is found 63 warnings. You're just going to say commit anyways. And then one file should be committed. That was very important just because you have committed it does not mean that it is online in GitHub. To basically upload it on GitHub, we need to press the push button right here. That's the green arrow pointing to the top right. We just click this. We're basically going to push the commit right here. And we're going to say push. And then it should push it. And there you go, pushed one commit to origin master. So if I open GitHub again and reload the side, you can see 38 seconds ago added a comment exactly what you would want. And that would already conclude this first tutorial for the 1181 Forge tutorial series. And it's going to be a good one. I am sure of it. If any questions remain or you run into any issues, of course, always feel free to leave me a comment. I'll try to respond to them best I can. However, I'm getting a lot of them these days. So please know that it might take a while or I might not get to you. It just sometimes is what it is. However, nonetheless, I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. So yeah. <laughs>